just before this video begins, purely to save my own skin. Uh, this is not financial advice, even though I use the word advise in this. I'm not a financial advisor, I do not have any form of career within it, uh, this is just based off of my personal experience. So anyway, on with the video. Today I wanted to talk about a book in particular, so yes this is a tech channel and also a productivity-esque channel, however I do want to talk about some books that have helped me in terms of personal finance or within certain areas of productivity or self-improvement at different points, so this is going to be one of them and this is going to be the first one which is talking about the book I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Now this book in particular was the first book ever that I read back to front, well front to back, uh, after I turned 16. So literally but before then the first book I had ever actually read was a 80 page book when I was like 12 and then I never read anything and then I read this. Not this one in particular, I read the original version uh, and the UK version of that original version which I would recommend making sure to get the one that specifies for your country because normally this basic one is set for Americans so you'd have to translate a lot of it yourself and if you're able to do that that's great however there is a lot of things that for example they label different things in America to what we have here and then some things we just don't have at all. So yeah I'd highly recommend getting the UK version as even the one that was written back in 2013 I think it was, still has a lot of attributes to this day that many people will be able to take advantage of. Now I think the first place to start when it comes to what did I actually learn from I'll Teach To Be Rich was the first actual account that I opened, like a savings account fully, which was an ISA. Now I got a help to buy ISA uh, when I turned 17 and I saved up £1,200 which at the time was the maximum you could put in and then every single month for I think about three and a half years I put £200 in. So I had roughly £8,000, uh, which was a good amount of savings for a 19 year old. I sadly don't have that money anymore due to f error financial decisions that I've made in my past, but also financial risks that I'm taking currently to try and pursue what it is that I want to be doing. So because of these different things, it gave me that buffer that realistically has helped me now that if I didn't save that money in the past, I would be completely screwed now. So I would say definitely go and open an ISA, mainly not because of its actual benefits. Now this is all because of you know the fact that a lot of ices for example will give you certain benefits. My help to buy originally was it would give me three grand once I have 12,000 and I'd only get that three grand if I bought a house that was two, 250,000 pounds or less. So where I live that's never going to happen so it wasn't really a benefit that worked for me. However what did work for me was the method of how you got three strikes and you're out. You can't withdraw more than three times out of this ISA which meant I didn't touch any money in that account until I think I had 7,000 pounds in there anyway so all in all I highly recommend getting one purely because it will give you in a way some weird like thing of hey I'm actually gonna save money and there's kind of a consequence if I don't it's a weird subconscious thing that will happen more than anything obviously you might be perfectly capable of saving money outside of this uh, but if you're someone like me who for example will kind of spend on things just because you have that sudden urge of, like I really want this thing then I'd highly recommend getting something like that and then prioritizing that above all else because during that time of saving money, I literally prioritized that. The first thing, whenever I got any money in from my job, that 200 pounds was sent over there and it just slowly stacked and stacked and stacked. Now the next big thing in my opinion is the fact that if you have a regular job which the majority of people do and I did for quite a while this will actually make you realize that you actually can become wealthy without necessarily needing to make tons and tons of money early. So I think this book is a guide to making a lot of money if you want to just have a normal career path which honestly it is great. It is a great idea, great concept um, and this goes from the idea of compound interesting, well not interesting, compound interest. Um, this entire idea premises on basically investing a portion of your money every single month into something like the S&P 500 or other index funds of that sort. And one thing that he would recommend within the book um, is investing into things like your pension scheme. So for example, here in the UK, uh, your pension is available however it isn't amazing um, what you can do for example is you can go to vanguard who runs the s p 500 open a account with them you can invest into their account every single month up until you're at the age of 55 then you can withdraw that money and because it's technically a pension account 
it's non-taxable. So this is something that you can take into account. This is why you need to kind of learn different parts of how the financial system works. So yeah, you can invest into that and slowly get to a point where, you know what, I can now withdraw my cash at the age of 55, not get taxed a ton of money in comparison to other investing options. And then that way you're actually making use of it. So in the example that he'll give in the book is roughly about $400 a month. If you can get to a point where you can put about $400 a month aside, so 400 pounds, let's say, which for a lot of people isn't the easiest thing. I won't lie. I think if you want to save for a house at the same time and save for other little bits, go on holidays and so on, it'll be hard to invest 400 pounds a month. However, if for example, you're able to get your income up to about three, well, let's say 32 uh, to about 40,000, then you might be able to do it just and do it well. Um, at that point, if you're able to do that all the way up until you are 55 due to compound interesting, you will be having a nice, decent chunk of change earned from that. Obviously, it depends on, uh, if, you know, recession years like we're in currently, or if, you know, other businesses start doing really well within something like an index fund and so on. So all of this does require a lot of your own research as well to understand a little bit more, but I'd still recommend reading the books. It will give you this basic knowledge that you require. Now, the next one that I think is actually a really good message to push is a rich life is objective, fundamentally. So a lot of people will connotate a rich life with, I want to be able to travel anywhere, buy anything I want. I can afford the best things. I can afford anything I want. And one of the key points that he puts into it is most people want a rich life experience, not necessarily a rich life. There's a lot of people who are wealthy still have different stresses. The difference is, is that they are more money stresses effectively. So they are higher, like they are what would be deemed as extreme first world problems. Whereas a lot of people want to be able to travel the world whenever they want. I've got a sister, for example, who worked as a waitress for 10 years and she's traveled to tons of countries. But by the time she was 26, I believe she had traveled about 30 countries, I believe she's told me. And that's insane when you think about it. And that's just because she prioritized really wanting to go travel. So it is all down to what do you want to spend money on? What don't you want to spend money on? And so on. Like if, for example, you don't necessarily care about clothes that much, then you can always save money on the clothes that you're buying. You can always save money on not, for example, let's say you don't really care about going and buying that new game every single, like every other month. Don't buy it. Basically, cutting back on the things that you truly don't care about to then put more money into the things that you do care about. One thing that he points out is, for example, this doesn't mean cutting back on your lattes. That's the example he would use. For me, it would be something like cutting back on hot chocolates from Costa. When I was working full time, I would buy a hot chocolate from Costa every single day, purely because for me, I was like, one, I like these. Secondly, I make enough money in the day to justify my spend of this easily, even though it was spending like four pounds a day and that's five days a week, then that's again over the course of the entire month. So yes, it adds up quickly and ends up meaning you've spent a lot of money over the course of a year. However, if you get that level of enjoyment and you actually genuinely love the thing that you're getting, then you shouldn't need to get rid of it. The issue comes is let's say you are buying something completely useless. Let's say you're buying a pair of shoes that you wear rarely just because you think they look cool and in the moment they are trendy. Don't buy them. Try and hold back on buying that thing because realistically you don't care about it. So it's understanding what you care about, what you don't care about and finding out what a rich life looks like to you. Now, I thought I would spend some time, though, and talk about what it doesn't do very well. And this is something that I've seen kind of put towards this book, which is it doesn't do the entrepreneurial side of it that much justice. Now, I do agree with this. I don't think that if you, well, I think that if you are an entrepreneur or you're someone who is basically trying to make money on by themselves, so an entrepreneur, um, I wouldn't recommend this book for that area of life. However, I'd still recommend reading it to get a basic understanding of the rest of it. And the key reason is fundamentally, the book is very much targeted at people within a normal career field instead of someone who, for example, can be in and out of earning loads of money one month and next to none the next month. I'm a good example of that right now. For example, I'm trying to build up my YouTube channels. I'm trying to build up um, another business and then also another business on top of that. So for it, for me, my income can stretch between, for example, this year and I'll be open with this. I earn, I think, at my lowest in a month so far, £300. My highest in a month 
of £2,500. So this gives you a rough idea of like, it can literally go from you burning next to nothing to then getting bam, massive amounts. Then it kind of allows you to push a lot of things or cut up money between different months to keep yourself going. So I wouldn't necessarily say this book does a good job for entrepreneurs, but I think that is because it is the way it's intended to be. If you're someone who doesn't want to be an entrepreneur, and honestly, I can completely understand it. I don't think it's for everyone. And one of my key things with this book is that if you want to be able to have some money in the future and you want to go a normal career path, that's perfectly fine. And this book will teach you how to actually get there without sacrificing all your time or your energy and sacrificing everything you have just to try and get there. I think it's a really good book in that regard, but if you're an entrepreneur, it's not going to help you in terms of understanding truly what it is that you need to be doing with your money right now. In those moments, I think most of the time, only either other entrepreneurs who have already made it can help you, but also you. You are a big part of that because if it's not working for you, I can say this for myself, I went back to my job. Um, I'd, I went self-employed for about six months in 2021 and then I went back to my job and I'm now self-employed again after working there for a year. The reason why is fundamentally the reason why I went back is the security. So I can understand why people want a normal job and I do think this book will help you become more wealthy because of it. But if again you are someone like me who's trying to make it on your own then it won't necessarily work out easily for you just reading this book. Anyway hopefully this video was helpful. If it was make sure to leave a like and do subscribe for more content in the future. Down below I'll have frostcoachingacademy.com. Now this you can just sign up to the email list. You'll be emailed in the future when I have a actual coaching product and also workshops that are in the works all regarding self-improvement and improving your life. However, I've got a free document that if you're interested in it, you can download it. And that document is literally just a journaling prompt guide to improving your life that I've used personally. For example, this notebook here is my new journal. I was super excited to use it. I know, I don't know why I'm necessarily discussing this too much on this channel, but you'll see these first few pages here. I've basically done that journaling practice fully within the first front half of it and I've now basically got a better understanding as to where it is that I want to be going with my life. So yes, if you are interested, go check that website out. If you want any slimline wallets like these, check out minimaldesigns.com. That's designs with a Y, not an I again. All this will be linked down below and I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one.